Good afternoon, Year 5. I am in my comfy reading chair here, and I'm going to be reading to you Chapter 10 and 11 of Wolf Brother. The words are going to be on the screen. If it's too hard to read, just sit back and listen, or if you'd like to try and read along, you're more than welcome to. Here we go. Chapter 10. What are you going to do to me, said Torak, as Oslak tied his wrists behind his back and then to the roof post. What are you going to do? You'll know soon enough, said Oslak. Finn Kedden wants it settled by dawn. Dawn, thought Torak. Over his shoulder, he watched Oslak trying a reluctant wolf to the same roof post on a short rawhide leash. His teeth began to chatter. Who decides what happens to me? Why can't I be there to defend myself? Who are all those people by the fire? Ow! exclaimed Oslak, sucking a bitten finger. Finn Kedden sent runners to call a clan meet about the bear. Now they're deciding about you, too. Torak peered at the figures hunched about the long fire. Twenty or thirty men and women, their faces starkly lit by the flames. He didn't give much for his chances. Dawn. Somehow, before dawn, he had to get out of here. But how? He was sitting in a shelter tied to a roof post, without weapons or pack. And even if he got free, the camp was heavily guarded. Now that darkness had fallen, a ring of fires had sprung up around it, and men with spears and birch bark horns were keeping watch. Finn Kedden was taking no chances with the bear. Oslak yanked off Torak's boots and tied his ankles together, then left, taking the boots with him. Torak couldn't hear what they were saying at the clan meet, but at least he could see them, thanks to the odd construction of the raven shelter. Its reindeer hide roof sloped sharply down behind him, but in front there was no wall at all, only a crossbeam, which seemed to deflect the smoke from the small fire that crackled just in front, but trapped the warmth inside. Straining to make out what was going on, Torak saw people rising one by one to speak. A broad-shouldered man holding an enormous throwing axe, a woman with long nut-brown hair, one lock at the temple matted with red ochre, a wild-eyed girl whose skull was weirdly plastered with yellow clay to give it the roughness of oak bark. He couldn't see Finn Kedden, but a little apart from the others, the mage crouched in the dust, watching a large glossy raven. The bird stalked fearlessly up and down, uttering the occasional harsh, Kark! Torak wondered if it was the clan guardian. What was it telling her? How to sacrifice him? Whether to gut him like a salmon or spit him like a hare? He'd never heard of clans sacrificing people, except long in the past, in the bad times after the Great Wave. But then he'd never heard of the Raven Clan either. Finn Kedden want it, wants it decided by dawn. The listener gives his heart's blood to the mountain. Had Fawn known about the prophecy? He couldn't have done. He wouldn't have sent his own son to his death. And yet he'd make Torak swear to find the mountain. He'd said, don't Hate me later. Later, when you find out. The cub's rasping tongue on his wrist brought him back to the present. Wolf liked the taste of the rawhide. Torak felt a surge of hope. If Wolf could be made to bite instead of lick. Even as Torak was wondering how to put that in a wolf talk, a man rose from the long fire and crossed the clearing towards him. It was horrid. Frantically, Torak growled at Wolf to stop. He was too hungry to notice and went on licking. Horde wasn't interested in Wolf, though. He stood by the smaller fire in front of the doorway, gnawing his thumbnail and glaring at Torak. You're not the listener, he snarled. You can't be. Tell that to the others, retorted Torak. We don't need a boy to help us kill the bear. We can do it ourselves. I can do it. I'll save the clans. You wouldn't stand a chance, said Torak. He felt Wolf starting to nibble the rawhide with his sharp front teeth and kept very still so as not to put him off. He prayed that Horde wouldn't look behind him and see what Wolf was doing. But Horde seemed too agitated to notice. He paced back and forth and turned on Torak. You've seen it, haven't you? You've seen the bear. Torak was startled. Of course I've seen it. It killed my father. Horde cast a furtive glance over his shoulder. I've seen it too. Where? When? Horde flinched as it warded off a blow. I was in the south with the Red Deer clan. I was learning magecraft. Sakun. 
he nodded at the old woman talking to the raven our mage she wanted me to go again he tore at his thumbnail which had started to bleed i was there when the bear was caught i saw it made Torg stared at him made what do you mean but horde was gone middle night passed the dying moon rose and still the clan meat went on still wolf licked and nibbled at the rawhide but oslak had tied the knot securely and wolf couldn't seem to get his jaws around them don't stop Torek begged him silently please don't stop he was too scared to be hungry but he felt bruised and stiff from the fight with horde and his shoulders ached from being tied up for so long even if wolf managed to gnaw through the bindings he wasn't sure that he'd have the strength to run away or slip through the guards he kept thinking about what horde had said i saw it made there was something else too Hor had been the red been with the red deer clan and Torg's mother had been red deer he'd never known her she died when he was little but if the ravens were friendly with her clan then maybe he could persuade them to let him go outside boots scuffed the dust quick they mustn't catch wolf at his wrists Torak just had time for a swift warning oof which luckily Wolf obeyed, before Wren appeared in the doorway, chewing a leg of roast hair. Her sharp eyes took in Wolf sitting innocently behind him, then fixed on Torak, who stared back, willing her not to come any closer. He jerked his head at the clan meet and asked if any Wolf clan were present. She shook her head. Not many Wolf clan left these days, so you're not going to be rescued, if that's what you were thinking. Torak did not reply. He just pulled at the rope around his wrists and felt it give a little. It was beginning to stretch, as rot hide does when it gets wet. If only Wren would go away. She stayed exactly where she was. No wolf clan, she said with her mouth full, but plenty of others. Yellow Clayhead over there is from the Oroch clan. They're deep forest people. They pray a lot. That's how they think we should deal with the bear, by praying to the world spirit. The man with the axe? is boar clan he wants to make a firewall to drive the bear towards the sea the woman with the earth blood in her hair is red deer not sure what she thinks with them it's hard to tell turk wondered why she was talking so much what did she want whatever it was he decided to go along with it to keep her attention away from wolf he said my mother was red deer maybe that woman over there is my bone kin maybe she says not she's not going to help you he thought for a moment your clan are friendly with the red deer aren't they your brother said he learned magecraft with them so he he told me he saw the bear made what did he mean she gave him her narrow mistrustful stare i need to know said torak it killed my father wren studied the hare's leg horde was fostered with them you know about fostering don't you her voice held a touch of scorn it's when you stay with another clan for a while to make friends and maybe find a mate. I've heard of it, said Torak behind him. He felt Wolf snuffling at his wrists again. He tried to bat him away with his fingers, but it didn't work. Not now, he thought. Please, please, not now. He was with them for nine moons, said Wren, taking another bite. They're the best at magecraft in the forest. That's why he went. Her mouth curled humorlessly. Horde likes to be the best. Then she frowned. What's the cub doing? nothing Torek said too quickly to wolf he said in a stilted voice go away go away wolf of course ignored him Torek turned back to wren what happened next another look what are you asking what why are you talking to me her voice her face closed she was as good at keeping things back as finn Keren. thoughtfully she picked a shred of hair from between her teeth horde hadn't been with the red deer long she said when a stranger came to the camp, a wanderer from the Willow Clan crippled by a hunting accident. Or so he said. The Red Deer took him in, but he, she hesitated, and suddenly looked younger and much less. He betrayed them. He wasn't just a wanderer. He knew magecraft. He made a secret place in the, wo in the woods and conjured a demon, trapped it in the body of a bear. She paused. Horrid found out. By then it was too late. Beyond the shelter, the shadows seemed to have deepened. Out in the forest, a fox screamed. Why, said Torak, why did he do it, this wanderer? Wren shook her head. Who knows? Maybe to have a creature do his bidding? But it went wrong. The firelight glinted in her dark eyes. Once the demon got inside of the bear, it was too strong. It broke free. 
killed three people before the red deer could drive it away. By then, the crippled wanderer had disappeared. Torak was silent. The only sounds were the trees whispering in the night breeze and the rasp of Wolf's tongue as he licked the rawhide. Wolf accidentally caught Torak's skin in his teeth. Without thinking, Torak turned and gave him a sharp, warning growl. Instantly, Wolf leapt back and apologized with a grin. Ren gasped. You can talk to him? No, cried Torak. No, you're wrong. I saw you. Her face was paler than ever. So it's true. The prophecy is true. You are the listener. No. What were you saying to him? What were you plotting? I've told you I can't. I won't give you the chance, she whispered. I won't let you plot against us. Neither will Finn Kedden. Drawing her knife, she cut Wolf's leech, scooped up, scooped him up in her arms, and raced across the clearing towards the clan meet. Come back, yelled Torak furiously. He yanked at the bindings, but they held fast. Wolf hadn't had time to bite them through. Terror washed over him. He'd put all his hopes in Wolf, and now Wolf was gone. Dawn was not far off. Already the birds were stirring in the trees. Again, he tugged at the bindings around his wrist. Again, they held tight. Across the clearing, Finn Kedden and the old woman called Sakun raised to their feet and started towards him. Chapter 11 How much do you know? said Finn Kedden. Nothing, said Torak, eyeing the jagged bone knife at the raven leader's belt. Are you going to sacrifice me? Finn Kedden did not reply. He and Sakun crouched at either side of the doorway watching him. He felt like prey. Behind his back, he scrabbled around for something, anything that he could use to cut the rawhide. His fingers found only a willow branch, mat, smooth and useless. How much do you know? Finn Kedden said again. Torak took a deep breath. I'm not your listener, he said as steadily as he could. I can't be. I've never even heard of the prophecy. And yet he wondered, why was Ren so certain? What does speaking wolf talk have to do with it? Finn Kedden turned away. His face was as unreadable as ever, but Torak saw his hand tightening on his knife. Sakun leaned forwards and peered into Torak's eyes. In the firelight, he saw her closely. He'd never encountered anyone so old. Through her scant white hair, her scalp gleamed like polished bone. Her face was sharp as a bird's. Aged had scorched away all kindly feelings to leave only the fierce raven essence. According to Wren, she said harshly, you can talk to the wolf. That's part of the prophecy, the part we didn't tell you. Torak stared at her. Wren's wrong, he said, I can't. Don't lie to us, said Finn Kedden without turning his head. Torak swallowed. Again, he groped behind him. This time, yes, a tiny flake of flint, no bigger than his thumbnail, probably dropped by someone sharpening a knife. His fingers closed over it. If only Finn Kedden and Sakun would return to the clan meet, he might be able to cut himself free. Then he could find wherever Ren had taken Wolf and dodge between the guards and his spirit sank. He'd need a lot of luck to manage all of that. Shall I tell you, said Sakun, why you can talk to a wolf? Sakun, what's the use, said Finn Kedden. We're wasting time. He must be told, said the old woman. She fell silent. Then with one yellow claw-like finger, she touched the amulet at her breast and began tracing the spiral. Torak watched her talon going round and round. He started to feel dizzy. Many summers ago, said the raven mage, your father and mother left their clan. They went to hide from their enemies far, far away in the deep forest amongst the green souls of the talking trees. Still, her talent traced the spiral, drawing Torak down into the past. Three months after you were born, Sakun went on, your mother died. Finn Kedden got up, crossed his arms over his chest, and stood staring out into the darkness. Torak blinked, as if waking from a dream. Sakun didn't even glance at Finn Kedden. Her attention was fixed on Torak. You were only an infant, she said. Your father couldn't feed you. Usually when that happens, your father the father smothers the child to spare it a slow death from starvation. But your father found another way, a she-wolf with a litter. He put you in her den. Torak struggled to take it in. Three months you were with her in the den, three moons to learn the wolf talk. 
Tarak gripped the flint flake so hard that it dug into his palm. He could feel that Sakun was telling the truth. This was why he could talk to Wolf. This was why he'd had the vision when he'd found the den. The squirming cubs. The rich, fatty milk. How could Sakun possibly know? No, he said. This is a trap. You couldn't know this. You weren't there. Your father told me, said Sakun. He can't have. We never went near people. Oh, but you did once, five summers ago. Don't you remember? The clan meet by the sea. Tarek's pulse began to race. Your father went there to find me, to tell me about you. Her talon came to rest at the heart of the spiral. You are not like others, she said in her raven's croak. You are the listener. Again, Tarek's grip on the flint tightened. I can't be. I don't understand. Of course he doesn't, said Finkedon over his shoulder. He turned to Torak. Your father told you nothing about who you are. That's right, isn't it? Torak nodded. The raven leader was silent for a moment. His face was still, but Torak sensed a battle raging beneath his mask-like features. There is only one thing you need to know, said Finn Kedden. It's this. It is not by chance that the bear attacked your father. It's because of him that it came into being. Torak's heart missed a beat. Because of my father? Finn Kedden warned Sakun. The raven leader shot her a sharp glance. You said he should know. Now I'm telling him. But, said Torak, it was the crippled wanderer who, the crippled wanderer, cut in Finn Kedden, was your father's sworn enemy. Torak shrank back against the roof post. My father didn't have enemies. The raven leader's eyes glinted dangerously. Your father wasn't just some hunter from the wolf clan. He was the wolf clan mage. Tarak forgot to breathe. He didn't tell you that either, did he? said Finn Kennan. Oh, yes, he was the wolf mage, and it's because of him that this creature is rampaging through the forest. No, whispered Torak. This isn't true. He kept your, you ignorant of everything, didn't he? Finn Kennan, said Sakun. He was trying to protect. Yes, and look at the result. Finn Kennan rounded on her. A half-grown boy who knows nothing. Yet, you ask me to believe that he is the only one who can. He stopped short, shaking his head. There was a taut silence. Finn Kedden took a deep breath. The man who created the bear, he told Torak quietly, did it for the single purpose. He created the bear to kill your father. The sky was lightning in the east when Torak finally cut the rope round his wrist with a flake of flint. There was no time to lose. Finn Kedden had just gone back to the clan meet with Sakun, where they were locked in heated argument with the others. At any moment, they might reach a decision and come get him. It was an effort to saw through the binding at his ankles. His head was reeling. Your father put you in the den of a she-wolf. He was the wolf mage. He was murdered. The flake of flint was slippery with sweat. He dropped it, fumbled for it again. At last, the binding was cut. He flexed his ankles and nearly cried out in pain. His legs burned from being cramped for so long. Worse than that was the pain in his heart. Fa had been murdered, murdered by the crippled wanderer who had created the demon bear with the sole aim of hunting him down. It was impossible. There had been, there had to be some mistake. And yet, deep down, Torak knew it was true. He remembered the grimness in Fa's face as he lay dying. It will come for me soon, he had said. He had known what his enemy had done. He had known why the bear had been created. It was too much to take in. Torak felt as if everything he'd ever known had been swept away, as if he stood on day-old ice watching the cracks spreading like lightning beneath his feet. The pain in his legs wrenched him back to the present. He tried to run some feeling into them. His bare feet were cold, but there was nothing he could do. He hadn't been able to see where Oslak had taken his boots. Somehow, without being spotted, he had to get out of the shelter, across to the hazel bushes at the edge of the clearing. Somehow, he had to evade the guards. He couldn't do it. He'd be seen. If only he could find some way to distract them. At the far end of the camp, a lonely yowl rose into the misty morning air. Where are you? cried Wolf. Why did you leave me this time? Torak froze. He heard the camp dogs taking up the howl. He saw people leaping up from the clan meet and running to investigate. He knew that Wolf had given him his chance. He had to act fast. 
Quickly, he edged out of the shelter and dived into the shadows behind the hazel bushes. He knew what he had to do, and he hated it. He had to leave Wolf behind. That's it for chapter 10 and 11. Um, if you are interested in doing our extension challenge, I would like you to write reading comprehension questions for each of our Viper skills, and then you can answer them in full sentences. Remember our Viper skills, vocabulary, inference, predict, explain, retrieve, and summarize. Even if you don't do all five, you could pick a few. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm really excited to pick up on chapter 12 after break. I hope you all have an excellent week off and I will see you not next Monday, but the Monday after. Goodbye.